Hello and welcome to part two of how to get started in the gaming industry. I'll be your host for this event. My name is David Voiles and I'm a technical evangelist at Microsoft. For this ongoing event, I plan on illustrating a number of ways you can get started in gaming, regardless of your background. You don't need to be a rock star programmer or have a degree in fine art to begin. Fortunately, the internet has more than enough resources to get you off the ground and I aim to highlight some of the best ones out there. In part one of this series, we explored the importance of creating an online portfolio, which is great for getting exposure and showcasing your work. Now that we've got that done, it's time to start networking and introducing people to that portfolio. First thing I'd like to touch on are industry events. Uh, the first one that comes to my mind is GDC, or the Game Developer Conference, which is held in San Francisco, California each year, about the end of March or maybe early April. Uh, in addition to that, we have one called GDC Europe, which is generally in Cologne, Europe. And immediately followed that is Gamescom, which I'll touch on shortly. GDC was the first event that I got involved with uh, about six years ago. I was uh, at work one day, uh, working in New York, and I saw an advertisement for it in the back of um, a Game Informer. So I thought I always liked uh, playing games. I loved getting into this industry. I just finished college, um, but I didn't know where to get started. So that day I booked a flight to San Francisco, rented a hotel and bought an expo pass for $350. I did not know anybody there or in the industry. I didn't know the first thing about game development or programming, but I made a point to go in and learn as I was doing this. So. Um, as I first went to GDC, the Expo Floor Pass will give you the opportunity to sit there and listen on a lot of talks, but also um, be able to witness things like um, the little indie circle, where you can see other independent developers showcasing what they're working on, too. Um, in addition to that, some of the largest engine makers out there, such as uh, Crytek or Epic making the Unreal Engine or Unity with uh, Unity, um, they'll give several talks as well on how to get started with their technologies. The Expo floor is a great place to get started and to network. And again, the pass is uh, definitely affordable. When I hear people say, oh, I can't afford $350 for it, I think, but you're going to university right now, which is costing you $40,000 a year. So this is a very small trade-off to make. And sure, perhaps you'll have to miss uh, a little bit of class, right? Maybe it'll be me out of class for three or four days. But in the end, I think it is a very wise investment for those who do want to go to school. Um, in addition, there are several ways you can raise funds. I had most recently seen um, an online website, obviously online, that allowed you to um, go around your community and raise funds, and other people who are active in game development could help raise funds for you too. Um, so at GDC, uh, you're gonna have the opportunity to not only network, but also learn a lot from many other developers that are out there. There's tons of post-mortems. In fact, I believe uh, GDC actually has a YouTube channel now where you can see a lot of the older content there. So you can see uh, maybe the making of Doom or some of these games from the 80s, 90s, and even today. So that's a great place to get started and uh, to get familiar with some of the names that are out there. Um, GDC Europe was much, much smaller than GDC that we have in San Francisco, but I still found it worth my while. Um, immediately following GDC Europe is an event called Gamescom, and it is the world's largest gaming event. Um, off the top of my head, I can't remember how many people went, but I know, uh, having gone to PAX and GDC many, many times over the years, uh, Gamescom absolutely dwarfs the rest of those. Um, it was easily 10 times larger than PAX, uh, which absolutely blew my mind the first time I had seen it. So if you're uh, European, that'd be a fantastic place to check out. But even if you're not European, it's an excellent opportunity to go out there and network and socialize with a lot of people. PAX, the Penny Arcade Expo, is largely an event for consumers and not so much for developers, but at the same time, they do have many talks geared towards development, uh, often post-mortems, or uh, I was even on a panel with several fantastic people from PAX about uh, creating a five-year road plan on how to get into the gaming industry, and that's what got me started over here. Um, so they have those at PAX Prime in Seattle, um, that's in the summer every year. They have PAX East in Boston, which is generally uh, just before or around GDC. Um, they also have PAX South, which I believe is in San Antonio, Texas, and now they have PAX in Australia. So regardless of where you are in the world, there are several events um, for you. In fact, there are many at, uh, just in Japan alone, a Bit Summit comes to mind immediately. For those of you working in music though, you may think, okay, well these game development forums may not be the best place for me, but what about me as a musician? Well, fortunately for you, there's something called MAGFest, or Music and Gaming Festival. 
It's held in Washington, D.C. in January, I believe, each year um, on this uh, small private island, I guess we'll call it. It's not a tropical island, but um, it's definitely isolated from the rest of D.C. Um, fantastic place if you like chip tunes, video game music of any sort, or you're at least very creative and wanting to get into the gaming industry. It's much smaller than the other events, but I found it also to be much more personal. Um, in addition to that, they have a huge arcade that you can play at at night. It's open, I believe, 24 hours. Um, I've definitely stayed there um, till the wee hours of the morning playing X-Men um, with several other friends, as well as Dungeons & Dragons. Um, so that's it for uh, gaming and events I can think of off the top of my head. But maybe you're still in university and you're looking for something to get started with. Well, perfect. Um, I just came back from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I live here in Philadelphia, so it's not far away. But they had an event called Let's Play PA, where they had about 25 developers there to showcase some of the games that they're working on. Um, so I had an opportunity to go around from booth to booth, play some of the games, speak with the developers, ask them questions about how they put this together. But even better, they had uh, well over 120 students there and young professionals looking to get started in the industry, um, all of whom needed questions that had to be answered. There were several panels. Uh, I was on one for how to raise uh, funds or money for your gaming project. Uh, there was another one, um, a keynote was actually held by a gentleman from Ubisoft explaining how to get started in the gaming industry. Uh, very similar to this talk right here. And one piece of advice that I think a lot of students left with there is they had to decide, do I want to be a programmer, a writer, a musician, an artist? And if so, which of those specialties do I want to fall in? Because all of those career paths also have their own specializations. Now, that doesn't mean you have to decide right away, but you'll have some opportunity to think about this over time. Um, so I'm sure your university, or at least some universities in the area, may have um, events similar to this. So reach out. If you go to one school, don't be hesitant to go visit another and see what their gaming industry or gaming events are like. So take a look at that. Uh, moving on, we see things like business cards. Um, these are extremely important. So you've gone to this game, gaming event, you now have a website, but you need a way of people remembering you after they meet you, or at least to follow up, right? So fortunately, we can use business cards. Now, there are a number of places to get this done. Um, off the top of my head, uh, I know Vistaprint and Moo or Office Depot, even Staples are all great places to go. Um, I'll include a link in the bottom of this video on some resources that I found. I just found a nice article on BuzzFeed that suggested five resources. Um, I used Vistaprint for years before I finally got some uh, cards made up through my employer. Um, great way to get the word out about what you're doing. Now, one thing that caught my mind about someone's card that I'd seen once before, this was uh, Logan Decker. He was formerly the editor-in-chief of PC Gamer. When I received his card about four or five years ago, he had his face on it. Um, and I, I asked him about that because when I got home uh, a week later, I picked up all of my cards, I'm sorting through them, and immediately I remembered who he was because his face was on the card. Now, some people may look at this as, as pompous, but the way I look at it is, if I come back and I have 100 business cards, well, the people who have a face that I can immediately recognize, those are going to be the ones that I'm going to remember. Um, so it's up to you whether or not you put it up there. Some people do, some people do not. It was just something that stood out in my mind. And after that, um, I frequently would put my own face on my business cards for that exact reason. Um, don't worry about the font. So you don't have to you know, go all Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. Just uh, make sure you're not using something silly like Comic Sans on your business card. Often um, a very light card with a uh, dark contrast for text, maybe black text on there, or the other way around, a very dark card with light text is a great way to get some visibility. You also want to make sure that you're very clear about your job title and only include one on there. And I say that because often um, I'll receive business cards that say, I am the CEO, the founder, the programmer, and producer on a project or for a, a studio. That is many, many hats to wear. So I know that we may wear many hats, especially if you're working on smaller projects or you're part of an independent studio, but something to keep in mind is that this is gonna be very, very confusing for everyone involved. So for that reason, I say, be very clear and precise about your title. Um, if you're a programmer, I often, often suggest, I'm just saying programmer on there. If you're a writer, say writer. Um, there's no need to have a million titles and just kind of do the shotgun blast and hope that somebody interesting comes along or says, oh, you're, you have these 10 roles? Well, I could use any one of these, so yeah, I should join my team. 
No, instead be very clear and know your target audience. Uh, but in addition to that, you're gonna want things like a link to your website, a link to your Twitter, your name, your phone number perhaps, and maybe even the city you're located in. Now, it doesn't mean you have to give your exact home address, but at least having something like, uh, I'm in Philadelphia, I would say Philadelphia, PA. This way, if someone does reference your card, and maybe later on they're traveling or visiting a location, they could say, hey, I'm going to Philadelphia next week. Why don't we go grab coffee? So that might be uh, one thing to consider there. Uh, but again, cards, pretty affordable. You can get them um, made pretty decently for about 30 or $40 a piece. Again, in the grand scheme of things, when you consider what students are paying for an education, um, that $30 or $40 for cards is actually not bad at all. So now you're at the industry event. You have a website to point people to. You have your own Twitter account. Uh, but you're about to start networking. Well, how do you do it? Okay, you've got your cards. First trick, go talk to people, right? Everyone is there because they love games too. You have something in common right away, right? That's the easiest way to break the ice. Uh, the gaming industry or entertainment as a whole, I'm finding is one of the industries where most of the people working there often don't accidentally fall into it, uh, such as other industries. Instead, it's often filled with people who are very, very passionate about what they're doing. So there you go, you share something in common, you can start the conversation right there. Uh, stay out late. If you go to PAX or GDC or any of those conferences, stay out as late as you can, network, socialize. Now, that doesn't mean you have to drink, it just means socialize. Frequently, I'll go for long trips and I'll just want water or coffee or tea at the end of the night. Fine, do that, nobody cares what you're doing, they're just there to, to mix and mingle. Now, what I found actually works really well is not so much to keep on business as you're having conversations with these people, but that's really your opportunity to get to know somebody as a person, right? That's where those long lasting relationships or friendships come from is those opportunities. You'll find that you're doing a lot of learning during the day, but it's really um, the friendships and the people who you like spending time with, those are gonna come out uh, in the evening. Um, don't ask if somebody is hiring. So. That's, uh, I find it to be very straightforward if someone says, oh, you're at this large company or this studio. Well, do you have an opening or where would I be a great fit? Well, probably not the most appropriate time. Instead, um, become friendly with this person and maybe a few weeks or months down the road, then follow up. Okay, again, we're just people trying to relate here. We don't want to push the business too hard. Um, save it for later. This is the time simply to get to know somebody. Um, finally, don't be afraid to say if you're new. Others will often want to help out and maybe even make introductions for you. So perhaps you're at um, having coffee at night or you're having a nice dinner with a bunch of friends. Well, let them know where you're from or what you're doing or what you're working on. Even if you're a student, they may have a lot of resources for you or maybe be able to pair you up with other students or people who are just starting to get their projects off the ground. It doesn't hurt to mention it. Now. Another important part that comes up very often at these events is people trying to approach journalists. Now journalists, they also love games, that's why they're there, but they've very much got a job to do as well. And you'll see many of them may be frazzled while they're there, it's because they've got so much to cover at such a short period of time, especially at these events where um, large studios or companies are releasing new products or getting things into the news. So again, this is not the best time to pitch your product or your game, instead, Make friends with this individual and hold it off for later on. So maybe games aren't the topic of the conversation for that night. Maybe it has something to do with uh, something a little more personal or you give them a little background about you. Um, you may even find that you know many of the same people outside of the gaming industry. So again, uh, the nightlife and socializing is where I find most of the um, friendships come from in the industry. And those things actually last years on down the road. Um, some of my closest friends today are people who uh, I had met when we were both just starting to get started or involved in the gaming industry, and now many of them are, are doing very, very big things. So again, just by maintaining that friendly relationship over the years, you can find that it can be mutually beneficial to both sides. Um, and again, keeping the business stuff aside, you're both just friends to begin with, and you both happen to work in games. So it works out uh, very well for everybody involved. So. That's all I have for networking and how to get started and socializing with you right now. But again, I want you to cover, um, or at least recap, the events you can go to. So we have GDC, which are held all over the world. And again, you can go online and find many of the videos that are already recorded um, for you to go see. They have a new YouTube channel where they're consistently uploading videos from previous conferences. Um, I did two there, one, 
uh, was how to pitch your game to uh, the press. Uh, it was about terrible um, PR pitches we had received at the time. I did it with some gentlemen from uh, Gama Sutra as well as uh, Joystick at the time, which is now uh, Engadget, I believe. Um, so take a look for that. Uh, we're actually on my, I'll, I'll link to it here because I'm pretty sure I still have the slides. Uh, and I also did another one on uh, Indie Games Summer Uprising, which was a gaming industry event where we aimed to highlight or showcase some of the best games and developers that were coming out of Xbox Live Indie Games about four years ago. Um, so I'll link to that as well. But if you have any questions on how to prepare some of this content or where to find any of it, feel free to reach out to me. My name is at Dave Voyles on Twitter. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Again, you want to look for business cards, so look at things like Vistaprint or Moo to get started. Uh, consider having your face on there, but again, very clear. One title, name, uh, maybe the city you live in, your Twitter, and your website. Uh, networking, you want to go out, socialize, uh, speak to as many people as you possibly can. So in my next video, I haven't decided what I'm going to cover yet, so that's why I'm going to leave it to you and uh, perhaps the fine folks at Reddit to help decide where to best lead this conversation, this dialogue. So if you think there's anything that I missed here or you'd like to come share some of your own experiences, feel free to let me know. And I want you to help dictate the conversation and uh, guide me down the path that you'd like to see covered. So if there's an area that you think I haven't quite covered yet, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'd be more than glad to cover it for you. Thank you again. My name is David Voiles, and you can find my work at DaveVoyles.com.